Hey y'all, welcome back to Reddit the Wire. Well, as part of our Breeders' Cup uh, full field and replay analysis series, we're going to take a look at the juvenile fillies. So let's get into it. So we're going to look at the juvenile fillies, and this is the prospective field. And of course, we don't know uh, exactly who is going in yet. Uh, we, you may know we've put in an asterisk by Bright Work because she is listed for the juvenile turf sprint as well. Uh, so we're not overly certain of which one uh, she's going to go in. But uh, two turns didn't look like something she'd want a whole lot, uh, given her last effort. So uh, uh, for now, we're going to take a look at her here. But uh, it is a possibility, uh, very distinct, that she'll show up in the sprint or the turf sprint. So this is the field. And as we did in the last video, we're going to group them uh, by the prep race that they were in. So the first couple we're going to look at, are just FYI and as well as life talk. So here's just FYI and I was trained by Bill Mott so immediately you have to take this one seriously. Uh, ran in the Frisette last and uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. A uh, little slow figure wise but uh, is undefeated and again if it's Bill Mott you have to take seriously and likely to move forward. Uh, next is Life Talk uh, by Rapoli, Rapoli Stables, and I believe came into the Frisette as the favorite and uh, ran an okay third, I suppose, uh, but certainly the potential is there to move forward given the connections, Todd Pletcher and Rod Ortiz. Uh, so let's take a look at the Frisette and see how they fared. Okay, this so this is the Frisette stakes, and you can see right off the bat that the weather wasn't the greatest that day. Uh, so that is something you have to consider. The post positions are you have Life Talk in the number two hole and Just FYI in the number five. So let's see how they did. And they're off in the grade one for Zet Stakes. And from the inside post, Irish Maxima quickly out for the see early they got away pretty well. And uh, both and Life Talk and, and Just FYI are going to linger in the back. Princess Indy is in between. Small field, so just pretty easy FYI to get position. On the far and just Early FYI, uh, Avenue, a little insects. bit to the outside, and uh, Life Talk saving a little more ground to walk towards the rail. Leads here by a length with Emery, the even money favorite, sitting in second. Opening quarter over the sloppy track in 23 and 3 fifth seconds. And of course, just Emery FYI was the big favorite third, here. About three and a half from the front. Then comes Life Talk and Princess Indy, followed by Central Avenue. Irish Maxima leads here by a length with Emery still in second. A length and you a see half. Life Talk life starting talk to make a move again, saving Just ground right along the, the rail. Then Princess Indy, who's dropping back At a bit. this point, there's and no Central excuses Avenue. for either of them. Half mile and 47 and three fifth seconds. Irish Maxima by a neck. Emery is in between horses with just FYI. And of course, we do have to remember this is a one turn outside. race. Here comes just Very important. FYI up to challenge for the lead. Irish Life Maxima talk a little is in between horses now. As almost Life shut off, but was able to scoot free. And now it's just a question of who's Here's good enough. Here's Life and you see, just They're FYI had Emory, plenty in the Irish tank. It's drawing Avenue, off. Just FYI, kicks clear now. I wouldn't just say FYI, Life Talk ran a bad race uh, either, but uh, just wasn't good enough. And uh, it's just all uh, it's all Junior just F Alvarado. just FYI. Avenue, got up for Life Talk was third. Next group of uh, fillies we're going to talk about are those that ran to the Darley Alcibiades, and we'll start with Candied, the winner. Uh, had a wide trip and uh, closed very strongly to take it, and we'll see that when we look at it. Uh, still pretty green, not changing leads. Uh, so you'd have to think that uh, they'll work that problem out, and, and really the sky's the limit for this one. Looks awful good. Uh, bright work uh, we're listing here, but uh, I have a strong suspicion she's not going to run in this race. Uh, didn't really take the two turns. Uh, had been murder around one turn. The spin away was a great win, and I uh, had dealt with ways and means and a lot of uh, other good fillies, but uh, you can't put in what God's left out. Two turns looks uh, not really uh, her wheelhouse. So uh, she did run in the race, but I think she'll probably be in the sprint or the turf sprint. Vivi's Dream, uh, trained by Kenny McPeak, so we know uh, she's going to get progressively better, and that's a really dangerous thing because uh, she's looked awful good so far. Ran a good race in the uh, 
Alcibiades just wasn't quite good enough, but certainly not one we're going to discount as the progression is likely to be there. And then finally, Owie's Beach, uh, trained by Tom Amos and uh, uh, got a win kind of unexpectedly at Saratoga. And uh, in this race, was uh, I really didn't consider to be a real potent factor in it, but uh, did get third. So let's take a look at the Alcibiades and see how it shaked out. So here's the Darley Alcibiades. And for reference, Alice Beach is in post number one on the rail, Candied in number three, Vivi's Dream in the five hole, and Bright Work in the seven. So let's see how they did. The Shimmering Allure comes forward. First wire at the post. The Roth in the Darley Bright Work broke extremely sharply. And uh, you wonder if maybe they thought the distance was going to be a, a question mark, so they uh, they sent her early just to see if uh, talent would win out, keep her out of trouble, and to see if she could uh, make a move. Is in great position, no excuses, but Allie's Beach got the lead. Is a bit hard to handle here in the turn. Tries to settle and down. You see Candy uh, just Back off the, the leaders about mid pack. Princess is seventh up on her outside, and a gap of two more lengths back to Shimmering Allure. Ducked and out of the and right up off the leaders right and uh, with the rest. perfect position. Quarter, so tactically, everybody's pretty much where they ought to be. Alice Beach is the leader, only by three quarters of a length. Bright work, second a length. BB and got off to a uh, reasonable first quarter, a little slow the second one. So. Uh, that's all really kind of telling that uh, if Alley's Beach couldn't win it with those soft fractions, that uh, not necessarily going to be a prime contender for the juvenile Phillies. And really no excuses for anybody at this point. You see Bright Work and particularly Vivi's Dream are both in prime position. Now she takes aim and moves up on the far outside as they move midway on the turn. Candied is moving up in the fourth, still five from the front. See Candied uh, getting going. Vivi's Dream and now it's just a question of who's good enough at this point. And Candied with that great big sweeping move and uh, not changing leads. Uh, so still kind of green, but uh, there's an awful lot of talent there obviously Vivi's dream, Vivi's dream no excuses whatsoever with the lead from Vivi's dream and, and uh, you do Alice wonder about who was behind candied. those the top Vivi's three there dream. so One, two, uh, it's basically Sires these two I think that you have to look at Alice really Miami. seriously for uh, Vivi's dream was home second this race third, Alice Beach or shimmering allure 1 minute 44.17 seconds Next two we're going to look at ran in the Chandelier Stakes out at San Anita. And, of course, that's important because it is where they're going to run the, the Breeders' Cup this year. First we're looking at is Chatelas, uh, they, uh, owned by Rancho Temescal and others. And uh, Mark Latt is a really solid trainer out at San Anita, if you didn't know. And Antonio Fresu is an up-and-coming rider. So this is one we definitely want to pay attention to. And uh, there may be a, a progression with this one because uh, prior to this race had been uh, been pretty good, but uh, I think took a little move forward. Had a ground saving trip uh, in the uh, Chandelier, but um, uh, it looked to, to me that uh, she's progressing. So we want to keep an eye, get, pay attention to that, particularly uh, since she'll have the home court advantage, if you will. And then Scalable uh, is from Rapoli Stable, so immediately we have to take seriously. Uh, rather interesting that Todd Pletcher shipped this one uh, out to California and uh, not some of his, uh, his other ones. I I'd say that uh, Scalable's probably on Pletcher's JV, uh, but obviously uh, finishing second did show something and uh, likely improvement uh, will happen uh, because they normally do with, with Pletcher's two-year-olds. So let's see how they did in the chandelier. So for the Chandelier Stakes, uh, pretty easy here. Chatelas is in post number one on the rail. And right next door is Scalable in the two hole. So let's see how they do. They're in the gate. And they're off Both in the away Chandelier. pretty well. Chatelas a little eager, a little more keen. Is very quick away from the gate, and so is Dua, those two. Right Both to the lead. And this the was... Dua had, uh, I thought, was a little overrated in this race, so I uh, kind of wonder a little bit about this field. Gets off to the lead pretty easily. Laurent was a little bit of a surprise that uh, didn't fire better, and uh, 
behind Chattelism. Thought Gate to Paradise would give a little bit way. better effort as well. In second. It's a length and a half back to Pacific Rose in third. And outside She's of scalable Bird, towards the to rear, saving a lot of ground, but so is Chatelas. Out to reasonable fractions. Laura is comfortable just outside of her. Seven lengths off the pace coming to the half mile pole. Scalable, motet between those two, and Pink Whitney has been at the back throughout. We move into the far turn. And it's Chattelis who's been the controlling speed. Tracked throughout by See, Dua, Dua as a Baffert, you know, expected Pacific to get Rose better and uh, had definitely improved uh, off prior Jones efforts, but uh, just didn't, didn't have enough to get to Chattelis. Still with a lot of work to do and not responding as the field turns for home. And here's Dua on the outside. And really no excuses for anybody at this point. Chattelis just got him. And uh, scalable, saving all the ground on the rail. Scalable making progress at the rail. There's an eighth of a mile to go. And Chattelis is digging in, fending off Dua thus far with a 16th to run, and in fact pulling away from her. And really impressive Chattelis to hold off uh, some, all some good pressure the there. Under Antonio it's a nice solid win. Complete the exact end. Dua was third, followed by Pacific Chattelis, Rose. She secures her spot in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly. Next we'll talk about is Tamara, who is definitely the horse on everybody's uh, tongue right now. Uh, a daughter of Beholder, uh, who was a hell of a filly, as we know. And uh, trained by Dick Mandela. There's, the sky's the limit for this one. Um, really pretty impressive, as we're going to see in a second in the Del Mar debutante. Uh, Would have liked to have seen another race uh, under this one, but uh, would, I'll trust Dick Mandela. He knows a hell of a lot more about uh, forgotten more about horse racing than I ever could remember. And uh, you got Big Money Mike aboard, so uh, looks pretty promising at this point. So let's take a look at the debutante. So it's not going to be hard to find Tamara uh, in this field. I, so uh, away they go. Let's see uh, Let's see how it came out. Full set now for the FanDuel Delmar debutante. And uh, let's see away all the way they go. pretty well. Along the inside, Julia's dream broke smartly and sets off to join the leaders in the center of the track. Tamara There's right on the lead. now going on with it. Here's the favorite Tamara going up alongside of the leader in the orange cap. Far side, Cheeky Gal goes up to race in third. And probably Tamara could have gone to the lead here, but I thought it was uh, a good thing that uh, uh, she's raiding in, in her training. Goes up to third. Julia's dream and just sit and chilly, perfect Fox position. Uh, pretty quick pace. Road, six lengths off these leaders. Laurent is on the far side. Then behind them comes beautiful Layla. And at the back of the pack is Motet. They head now towards the 3 8 pole, and the leader is pushing. Here, as here she goes. The and now putting the pressure on in second comes the favorite. Look at that acceleration. Now, it's Tamara who gets the lead and going nice. 44 and pricks. 2. Now she twitches her ears, and Tamara is full of run. Tamara opening up to lead by four. Laurent comes out of the pack now to make a race of it on the outside. And behind that is Chatella. They're at the top of the lane now. Changes and it's leads still right Tamara on cue. In front and going along comfortably by three. And away she goes. gamely by Laurent on the outside. But just look at this girl go. Tamara and Mike Smith could not have been more impressive. They win it impressively. A big seven, eight lengths in the end. Laurent was second, then came State to Paradise. Pretty and awesome. Back from that was Chatella. Next one we'll look at is the Canadian import, Go With Gusto, uh, owned by Gary Barber, a high-class outfit there and trained by Mark Cassie. Uh, the thing to note more than anything else is coming from Woodbine, of course, synthetic and turf are the only two uh, options surface-wise, but this one is by Medallia Doro with Giants Causeway underneath. Uh, so dirt should not be a problem and would probably relish two turns. So might be a bit of a sleeper. Uh, the summer stakes was on turf, uh, but let's just take a look at the uh, the running form of Go With Gusto and see where it brings us. This is the summer stakes at Woodbine, and it is on the turf. Uh, Go With Gusto is in the five hole. And note, uh, she was coming into this race at 22 to 1 go on for music today in the last alarm king of the track moves in stand by for a start they're all in locked up on their way in the bed three six five summer stakes so they got away pretty Western well world rushed out in front king of the track taken back after beginning in front but my boy prince 
and Joel Rosario saunter into the lead. My boy Prince Mid -pack and Prince West Wall, a pack of them to sing. Going forward is three wide music. A length there, Rosa. Yeah, on the inside, that a little bit, uh, with Gusto drop right back to the tail little, there. Little, and in the center, brought her is back a little bit more. It was kind of interesting. Of uh, and next to last position, she may be a tad Gusto. rank. Over on the inside, it's Carson's run of the back. About six lengths covers the field. Moving along and pretty well. Prince in front and shows the way by over length to Western World. Tucking in nicely, a Rosa on the inside. A half away came on the yard of Busick, a length and a half away, Tunchi, king of the tracks, improving around the outside from super attentive, and back second last, go with Gusto. On the inside last is Carson's run, showing the way every step of the way so far. My boy Prince with Western World in Moving second. Along pretty Up well. on the outside is Busick as they go down inside the three and a half. Maybe a little quick for surf. A length away on the inside. Coming forward nicely is Tunchi, and losing a touch of ground there was Erosa. King of the track is off the track, making ground. Behind them, super attentive. Go with Gusto, starting to run. And out acceleration, to the back. gets right to the, the outside, where she needs to be. And Joel Rosario trying to go for broke now. My boy Prince in the summer stakes from Western Will. Here's Carson's Huge run. Leads. What a Had slingshot a nice run. run down the outside by Dylan Davis. Carson's run storming out wide. They're wide apart. Carson's run, and my boy Prince flat up against the inside. And they are well clear of Go With Gusto running on, but down extremely wide on the track. Carson's run and powering on for a fantastic win. Dylan Davis and Carson's run by about two or three lengths. Pretty nice effort. My boy Prince has run second. Go With Gusto Seemed third. plenty in the tank for a mile. And then super attentive. 135.70. Jody's Pride's our next candidate. And uh, this one ran at uh, the Big A at uh, Belmont. Belmont at the Big A, whatever it is, back. Uh, but it ran in the matron stakes, and this is a one-turn race. Uh, and again, very important to uh, distinguish that from the others who have run at two turns. Uh, so let's see how Jody Spry did in the matron. So here's the matron stakes, and it is a grade three, so it's not a grade one. Um, Sugar High was uh, the horse of uh, the celebrated horse in this race, I think. Uh, but Jody Pride was a co-favorite. And is in the number seven hole. So let's see what happens here. Eat. The ten will complete the field. Field of seven going. Jody's Pride does have two turn track. pedigree, being by American Pharaoh. So despite the fact that this is one turn, I think and we can uh, assume that she'll probably appreciate two turns. And we'll see how she did here. The matron. Got away and well and uh, raided off the leaders. Uh, mid pack. She run an open raid, and, uh, and it's something I always look at. You know, they uh, you want to see him held up a, just a little bit, but uh, it's going all out here right from the get go. Sugar High is the trailer in seventh. Devil at midnight leads here by a half length. Love to eat on the outside in second. Jody's pride making a bold move. She goes. Here Didn't waste a lot of time. Just kind of settled. I think Jockey just let her settle a little bit, and then once she does. Really not much doubt. The inside in fifth. Sugar High begins to pick it up from the back of the pack. And Leslie's loot is the trailer. Jody's Pride is the leader as they come off the turn and into the stretch. It is Jody's Pride in turn, front. Jody's change Pride leads right on cue. Always like now to see that. And, and then really there's not the much stretch. doubt after this. A She's gone. Vista coming on through down at the rail is Tricky Temper. And on the outside is Sugar High. Jody's Pride in front. Tricky Tepper running in second. Jody's Pride has won the off Again, the turn. Then geared major. down a little bit at the end, which you always Tricky like Tepper to see as second. well. So pretty and good effort. Of Primera Vista. Finished third. The final time was one ten and three. Omaha Girl is our lone Florida import. And uh, the Florida breads, uh, the Florida races recently haven't, uh, last year in particular, this current year really didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't bring a whole lot. So, uh, uh, maybe it's a little downtime of the Florida breads. Used to be when they could ship uh, anywhere, uh, they'd always be uh, very competitive, but uh, uh, not quite sure as uh, much this year as other times. I will say Ammo Racing is a big-time outfit in uh, Europe in particular. Uh, you may have seen uh, Valiant Force. We talked about the Juvenile Turf Sprint. King of Steel uh, ran in the second in the Derby, so... It's a pretty high-class outfit in Europe, so they do have a U.S. division. Uh, so let's see how Omaha Girl did in the Hallandale Beach Stakes. So this is the Hallandale Beach Stakes, and Omaha Girl is in post number three. And it should be noted that uh, despite this being a one-turn race, Omaha Girl does have two-turn pedigree. 
Omaha Beach on the top and Tappet on the bottom. So I, a two turn should be right up this one's alley. And uh, I'll apologize in advance. The best uh, replay I could get is in Spanish. So uh, for those of you who do speak Spanish, you'll be able to follow along and others uh, just watch the race. So let's see what happened here. I see Omaha girl uh, way up uh, pretty well. Uh, still a little green, it looks like. But uh, assert yourself early, right to the lead, and pretty much it at this point. And you can see there was a pretty heavy duty favorite in this race, and uh, Omaha girl acquitted herself well to handle it. See, see, kind of green still, kind of all over the place. A little quick too, 46 and 1. And again, riding him, he's got a little bit of a hold on her, so that's, uh, that's good, good to know that there's, uh, there's some more horse there. Seems like a bit of a hand fill to ride, though, I, I will say. Changes leads. And they just can't make up any ground on it. Drifting out a bit there, too. So, still a little green, but uh, there's clearly some talent there. Pretty nice win. Last one we're going to look at is Esprit Enchant, and uh, owned by Altamir Racing, a pretty solid outfit out in California. Peter Miller, the trainer, and you got Big Money Mike, so. Uh, uh, as the jockey, so he's going to have a decision to make. Definitely want to keep an eye on which one uh, Mike Smith gravitates to. Uh, this is a, a horse who just broke her maiden, uh, but is by Tappet, so uh, two turns shouldn't be an issue. The only thing I would say is Peter Miller is not necessarily known for roots, but he is a solid trainer. Uh, so let's see how that maiden went. went. So here's that maiden, and Esprit Enchant is in post number three, and this is a California race, so we definitely want to pay attention to that home advantage at Santa Anita. See, uh, Spree on Sean, a little slow getting going, but uh, then engages pretty readily. And then just mid-pack, saving some ground down in the rail. Spree on Sean, the rail in fourth. Then where's my ring advancing very eagerly on the outside. I see the uh, he's got some horse there. The He's running open range. You always like that. It's elegant and Joel Rosario leading the way past the half mile pole. Nothing like you is just the next back second, followed by where's my ring taking third. See, he was the third You're choice in the, in the betting, so uh, under a hole two, only about two lengths it's off always the good leader. to see that. The uh, that uh, is next and another horse is moving forward, second finish. start. Midway around the far turn, and where's my ring? Made that pretty big good move. pace and sustained it up to take the lead now by a half length. Nothing like you, second elegant dropping right out of it. On the Takes outside, the here's wide route, changes nice leads, coming, and there's room for your trouble. There was room, and there no longer is absolutely blocked. Trying to come now, one from the rail, and you're in trouble. Is coming gamely after where's my ring, and on the outside, it's free on Sean. It's free on Sean with the moment showing some the good outside, grit there. Just got up. You're in trouble. Might have been very unlucky, but in a close photo. Then where's my ring? And nothing like you. So these are the uh, top prospects uh, culled from the uh, list of eligible candidates, and uh, they're not necessarily in any order. But uh, I think it's pretty clear that Tamara is the one to beat. Uh, that debutante race was pretty impressive, and uh, she's have it back on the home track. Dick Mandela's training. She's going to be awful hard to beat. Uh, just FYI, I think, has to improve speed-wise, but look like the kind that definitely can move forward. Trained by Bill Mott, you can't throw out in a Breeders' Cup race, so we'll definitely include. Uh, Candy has shown a lot of talent. It's still green, 
But uh, the changing leads, things like that, they can definitely work out. If they can't, it will cost her as you rise up in class. But uh, looks like the sky's the limit for Candide, and uh, I really like that horse going forward. Vivi's Dream uh, is one that's been there all uh, all season so far, and uh, I think it's logical to uh, continue to progress. Being by Kenny, trained by Kenny McPeak, that's logical, and uh, I thought had a had a good Alcibiades and uh, is one that you definitely have to consider. Uh, Chatelas mainly because uh, she is from uh, California and we we, can't, we have to take the California horses seriously when the Breeders' Cups run at Santa Anita. You will note that in the debutante, Tamara put Chatelas away pretty easily. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, she will be up near the pace and will have every chance. And if she takes another move forward, uh, could... Uh, could uh, make a run at it. Go with Gusto was pretty intriguing to me. Uh, it's got two-turn pedigree and dirt. I don't think is going to be a problem. Uh, looked uh, pretty good to me in the summer stakes. And uh, while coming off the pace is not the best uh, place to be at Santa Anita, uh, looks to be if she can uh, improve, might be one to upset the apple cart. But at the very least, you're going to get her. You can get her underneath with a price, and that's what's most appealing. Uh, Life talk mainly because she's trained by Todd Pletcher. I didn't necessarily like her frisette. Uh, I thought it was, uh, she really had every chance to win that race and didn't. Uh, and, uh, you know, save ground along the rail. Granted, it was in the mud, so maybe we can draw a line through it. And being by, trained by Todd Pletcher, she'll improve. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure how much uh, going into this race. Scalable has a race over the track at Santa Anita, and uh, I don't know how much, uh, how good that field really was, uh, but in the chandelier, but uh, she did, uh, she did close well enough, and uh, it was saving ground, so uh, I'm, again, the jury's kind of out on scalable, but being by trained by Todd Pletcher, there's a reason he sent her out there, uh, so maybe we give her a second look, and then Jody's pride, uh, wanna, she has to do it around two turns, but looked like uh, there's some ability there, put away a field like a good horse should, um, and it has the pedigree to go two turns. So uh, I think they're all going to have to beat Tamara, um, and I'm not sure any of them are really up to it. Maybe if I had to choose one, I might take Candied as a possible, uh, but it's a pretty, uh, pretty good field, and uh, Tamara's race to lose for sure. So there's the juvenile fillies. Uh, I think it's uh, everybody's playing for second when it comes to the, that race. Tamara just looks like the class of the field. Has to do around two turns, but uh, looks every indication is that's not going to be a problem for her, being by Beholder and uh, Dick Mandela training. So uh, really looking forward to seeing what she can do uh, in the British Cup juvenile fillies. Uh, looks to be... Uh, Looks to be a really promising filly for sure. Uh, so we're going to do this for all the divisions and uh, be on the lookout for further postings with that regard. And, of course, if you do like what you see here, please like and subscribe. And I hope this uh, you can use this as a study guide and it helps you in your strategizing for the Breeders' Cup. That's it from here. We'll talk to you soon. And until then, be well.